What's up everybody, this is Ambro here, and today we are going to talk about the upcoming game Sifu. Sifu is being developed by Slow Clap on Unreal Engine 4, and will hit the PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, and PC on February 8th, 2022. It will cost retail price of $39.99 for the standard edition or $49.99 US for the deluxe edition. Remember, if you like the video or find it informative, to give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. It would really help out the channel and I would greatly appreciate it. In this video, we'll go over a brief overview of what Sifu is, what the central story is about, and then go over some of the information that you really need to know about the game itself, from the combat to progression and how the game just works overall. So here we go, here are six things you need to know about Sifu. Let's just start with a little bit about the story and an overview of the game and its inspiration because I actually find this fascinating. Sifu is a beat-em-up third-person action-adventure game. In Sifu, you play as a 20-year-old Kung Fu student, and you embark on a lifelong mission to hunt down a group of five assassins who have brutally murdered your family. These five figures have become prominent figures in the fictional city and are held up in well-defended strongholds. The game is set in a contemporary Chinese city and is grounded in reality, but with magic infused in as well, and as you've probably seen by now, the protagonist is resurrected whenever they die. The hero has an ancient pendant that can heal them back to life. This is a crucial part of the gameplay loop, as each time you die, you resurrect as a more knowledgeable, more experienced fighter, but the character ages and becomes older. The devs have said that the aging is not permanent, but we'll cover that a bit more in a section later on. The game is inspired by kung fu movies starring Jackie Chan, where the beloved actor will just defeat multiple enemies single-handedly. The term Sifu itself translates to master in Chinese, and the combat style is Pac-Mei. We are told that the game includes over 150 attacks, which is staggering for a video game. This is a single player only game and is in line with the developer's past games. Slow Clap has previously uh, developed Absolver in 2017, which was also an RPG fighting game with a heavier focus on the online cooperative aspects of it. But for Sifu, the team at Slow Clap actually consulted a Pac-Mei Kung Fu master by the name of Benjamin Kulos to ensure that the game was authentic. I won't go into a deep history of Benjamin, but consider looking him up, he's a cool dude. Before we move on to the other points, let me be clear that this game was designed to be difficult, and it has a sharp learning curve, so fair warning and a good segue into our next topic, combat. One of the difficulties for the studio while designing the combat was to make sure that the experience felt authentic to the movies that it draws inspiration from. Movies like John Wick or movies featuring Jackie Chan, just like I mentioned before, it's hard to capture that kind of speed and velocity and slowing it down for gamers because, let's face it, most of us have the reaction time of a grasshopper caught in a vat of molasses. The devs also wanted the game and the combat to present a considerable challenge, so finding this balance was crucial. One major theme that is going to be present throughout the game and the progression is, quote, mastery through practice. This is a key value in many aspects of life, but especially the various types of Kung Fu. To address this, the devs have designed what they call the structure system. To emulate real combat motion of impacting and breaking the stance of your opponents, their ability to attack and defend themselves, and so on. Both yourself and your enemies have a gauge that you'll have to keep an eye on, and when you manage to break your opponent's balance gauge, you will have the ability to finish them with a powerful takedown. However, if your own gauge is filled, be prepared to be put in the Hurt Locker. Defensively speaking, you will have the ability to block, which will fill your balance gauge, but also be able to dodge moves, which will allow you to create space at key moments during a fight, which can be a lifesaver. Parrying is also an option which, when perfectly timed, will open up opportunities for counterattacks or throwing the enemy. You will even have control over your character to jump over or duck under incoming strikes, which will be useful against strong moves that cannot be parried. I know that dodging, blocking, parrying, stagger gauges, and so on aren't new in games, but I think that when executed well, they can be extremely engaging. The player will start with a basic offensive kit that will be able to deal with basically any enemy. But it will take you some time to learn all the different aspects of the techniques available to you. Again, this game is going to have a steep learning curve and it's not meant to be an easy game for the average gamer. 
You will have your basic strong and fast moves to build combos, but you will also be able to focus on single enemies or moving from one opponent to another. In terms of the flow combat, think kind of in lines with the way that the Arkham series did their combat or the recent Spider-Man game. It's not going to be quite as fluid, but that's the idea that they're going for. Again, much more grounded in realism. As you progress and unlock new skills, you will gain access to more options to kit out your character and how you prefer to fight. Some players are going to want to create tons of space between you and the crowd and just focus in on a single enemy, while others want to go full action movie star and attack every single enemy in the entire room, and you will be given the tools to do so. You'll be able to knock enemies down by yourself sometimes, or perhaps push them back into other enemies to stun them and disarm an enemy that's looking at you the way I looked at mashed potatoes on my Thanksgiving dinner plate. You've probably guessed by now, but the devs are really focused on that Hollywood kung fu action fighting scene feeling here, and fighting against multiple enemies is at the core of the gameplay experience. They've gone for a dynamic locking system of the camera to allow for quick swapping between multiple targets, which is going to be crucial in a game as quick as this. A huge part of the fighting experience will also be using parts of the environment to your advantage. We've seen this in previous games that were centered around melee combat. One game that comes to mind is the severely underrated Sleeping Dogs, which came out during the PS3 360 generation, and is to this day one of my favorite games of all time. That game had the Arkham style combat, but using the environment was extremely helpful in all the bone breaking combat. Anyway, back to Sifu. As far as environmental interaction, you as the player will be able to use it in all different ways, such as using furniture to toss it at your enemy's feet to build up that balance bar, or perhaps leap across a table to close the gap on an enemy. Positioning is going to be equally important, especially when fighting multiple enemies at one time. Making sure you don't get caught between a rock and the guy who wants to use your head as a soccer ball is going to be crucial. Also, one great feature that I love that they put in games is that the enemy's attacks will also damage each other. If an enemy takes a haymaker swing that you dodge and they land the attack on another enemy, they will take damage. This greatly adds to the realism of the combat and I'm super glad it's included. To touch on the aging mechanic, to be clear, aging will not make you weaker, but it will have an impact on your abilities. As you get older, you'll trade maximum health for offensive power. As you've already seen, your character's appearance does age appropriately, which is a great touch. One last thing to know about the combat is the focus mechanic. Focus is a resource that you build up as you fight. Resource is broken out into charges that you will progressively unlock during your playthrough. Using a focus charge will slow down time and allow you to choose a weak point on your opponent to do some serious damage, perhaps disabling them or just seriously wounding them. There are going to be different types of focus attacks as you level up, so keep that in mind. We've talked about progression and skills a bit just before in the combat section, but let's just talk about it for a brief minute here. You will be able to unlock skills either in between missions or at shrines that are found throughout the levels. Shrines will allow you to improve your character during runs by giving you, the player, the choice between different perks, each one of which will have different requirements that you will have to meet. Which ones you choose will depend on your playstyle. These upgrades are not lost on death. Speaking of death, let's talk about one of the defining features of the game. When you die, your hero will age. The first time you die, you will age by one year. The second time, you'll age by two years the third time by three, and so on and so forth. The only way to reset that counter is to use one of the available shrines or to beat specific enemies such as chapter bosses. Ending a chapter will also reset your death counter, but your age will not be affected. There is no way to get younger and you will only get older as you fall and get back up, just like real life. Past a certain age, dependent that allows you to resurrect will not have enough power and your ultimate death will result in a definitive game over. This is absolutely going to rub some people the wrong way, but you can't say I didn't warn you. However, even upon a game over, some of the elements of your progression are not lost. The game will create save points at the age you had when you finished that level. You'll be able to continue on from that chapter and just take what you've learned to try and beat the game, but there are permanently unlocked skills that will be available to you at the start of a new run. This roguelike element is a welcome feature and it's nice to see. 
Also something we haven't discussed yet is the detective board, which is an illustration of the progress of your hunt for the assassins. Upon a game over, you will still retain this information. This info can include shortcuts, hidden rooms or doors that you've unlocked in previous playthroughs, which means you don't have to do it all over again. A great touch and a good decision on the developer's part. Performance options. The devs are targeting 60 FPS on all platforms that the game is releasing on at the moment, even down to the base PS4, which is great for a game that focuses on fast hand-to-hand -hand combat. I think it's essential and it's no easy feat, especially on that hardware. So kudos to the devs for making the right call. We've already covered difficulty a few times, but I wanna make it very clear that there are no difficulty options at launch. I want to make this very clear because this has been a point of discussion in other games recently. <coughs> Returnal. <coughs> Where there have been certain members of that game's community that just defaulted to the cringe, get good or don't play the game mindset. And no one's got time for that kind of toxicity. But you should be informed at least before spending your hard earned money on this game. Obviously things could change between now and then, and make sure you check out your favorite reviewer's final verdict before making any decisions. I highly recommend ACG or skill up, but you do you. Another point that the devs wanted to make clear is that this game shares elements of a roguelike, but it really isn't one. One thing that the devs did say is that there are secrets in the game that probably won't make sense to the player until they've experienced the game a few times. This is great in a linear game like this to give it replay value. That's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it or find it informational, give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel. Also be sure to comment down below or contact me directly on Twitter on games you would like to see me cover. What do you guys think of Sifu? Are you as excited about living out your dreams of being a Kung Fu master as I am? Let's discuss down in the comments. I'll catch you next time.